everyone, welcome to another video. Today I have a see-through shaker card to share with you. I'm going to be using Joy Claire stamps, some of their new stamps, and I'm also pairing it with some Runea foil. Now, for my stamp set, I am using the Sprinkled with Love stamp set. This is one of the larger 6x8s, which I really, really like. I know they're a little bit more expensive than your 4x6, but not by much, really, well, compared to some of the prices of stamps nowadays. But this is just full of amazing images to use and it's packed full of sentiment. I love the font on these. So I'm going to be using this today, but I'm pairing it with the Renia foil. This is the pastels variety pack and these are the four by six sheets. You get 12 sheets in this pack. You can see all the colors you get down there. You not only get the foil, which is double sided, so you'll have that great pastel color on the front, but there's also gold on the back, but you also get those kind of embossed looking stars on some of the pages or some of the foils as well, and those are really fun to play around with. I'm using the regular foil today. I've chosen one of each color, the purple, the kind of teal color, and then the sea foam green, I guess you would say, and I am going to cut strips with these. I am not measuring these. I am just cutting thin, sometimes thicker strips, and I'm making sure they're nice and straight because I'm going to create my own pattern paper with these. This is super, super easy to do, and it's a great way to kind of add a bunch of shine to any one of your projects. And all you need is some of this foil and some adhesive. It's that easy. So like I said, I'm cutting some strips of these. I think in all I needed about six or seven strips to complete my cardstock that I'm creating. And mine measures five and a half by five and a half, I believe. I'm also going to be pairing this foil with some glitter on the front because if you have a little shine, you need a little sparkle too. And I'm going to cover my cardstock with some adhesive. Now I'm using sheet adhesive here from Score Tape. There are all different companies that make this kind of adhesive. I have cut it down to the same size as my cardstock panel that I'm working on. And very quickly, I just peel back a corner and kind of fold that corner back, and I can line up my cardstock corner with that exposed corner. This is an easy way to kind of get it positioned into place and not have to worry about the whole thing sticking down, sticking where you don't want it, and then trying to peel it up. It doesn't work, and then you've got to start all over. Once I get that corner down, I'm going to go ahead and start peeling off that brown backing paper and just pressing as I go to get it to stick down to the cardstock. If you don't have this sheet adhesive, you can use liquid adhesive on each individual strip and place it down, or you can cover up the back of your cardstock or the front of your cardstock, I guess, with strip adhesive. Just make sure that you have quite a bit on there. Um, but I just like this. It's not very expensive and I do not use it a lot. But in projects like this, it really saves me. And like I said, I don't use it on every project. So this has lasted me quite a long time. Now I'm going to start placing down these strips. I'm starting off with that seafoam green. I just lined it up with the edge of my cardstock. And I'm going to start placing it down really, really easy to do. This is all that it's going to be. It's going to be basically putting down the strips of cardstock, making sure they're nice and butt it up against each other so I don't have any white showing. I'm placing three at a time. So I started off with a green, I'll go to the purple, and finally that teal blue, place it down, and then I will leave a gap. Each time I place three down, I'm leaving a gap. That is going to be where my glitter goes. I'm not going to place the glitter down until the very end because if you try to put glitter on just a strip of this, it's gonna get everywhere. So leave those gaps in and just go and place the glitter at the very end. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to place each one of those strips down. I'm switching up the color here, so I did purple second on the first layer, I'm doing blue, and I'm trying to keep the strips that I'm using kind of variated as well. So in that first section where I left that large white area for the glitter, the next white area I left was a little bit thinner. This is just going to give you a true pattern paper look, and also with this, you want to make sure that you press it down all the way across, 
So I will actually end up taking a bone folder and just um, once I put the glitter on, I'll take a bone folder and press everything down really well. You could also run this through your die cutting machine. Make sure that you have a piece of paper over this as I learn later on so you don't pick up any of the marks from your cutting pads because you will very easily and it doesn't come out, but you'll see that in a moment. Now this may seem like it takes quite a bit of time, but this went by relatively fastly. I did have to come back and uh, cut a few more, so I started off with I think five, uh, maybe six pieces of foil, and then I had to come back in and cut some more, so that took a little bit of time. But altogether, this entire piece of cardstock took maybe five or ten minutes. Um, including the glitter so it wasn't that hard of a job to do it's just a little tedious I finished off with that very last strip of purple there at the very bottom and now it's gonna be time to put on that glitter so I have this glitter that I got from the Target dollar spot believe it or not during Valentine's Day this is just a pink glitter you can buy this anywhere I'm sure you could buy it at your local craft store even and if you don't have pink any color will do just make sure it matches whatever color foil you're using I put a piece of computer paper right over the top of that and like I said with my bone folder I'm going to press down really really firmly that's gonna get that glitter embedded it's gonna press that foil down make sure it doesn't slip off now glitter is cheap but it is messy so I put that piece of computer paper over there I'm not gonna worry about dusting off all that extra little glitter that got stuck I just fold it up and throw it away quickly and for my little panel, I'm using a soft brush over a piece of computer paper that I will dust that onto. It seems like I'm doing it roughly here, but in the video, I do it a little bit more gently so it doesn't fly everywhere. Now the brush wasn't doing it to get all the glitter off, so I took a foam brush actually, and that worked better to get all those little extra pieces of glitter off. And there I've got that gorgeous, gorgeous pattern paper ready to go. I cut off all of the extra little pieces and this was a little trick that I learned during this glitter mess. If you just use one of those sticky rollers that you're supposed to use to like get pet hair and lint off of your clothes, just run it across your craft mat. That picked up not only the foil pieces, but all the extra little pieces of glitter got stuck to that and they're not going anywhere. Those things are cheap, but oh my gosh, I am not gonna go without one in my craft room now because that cleaned up my desk like nothing I've ever used before. Even like the Swiffer duster cloths, this just, it worked fabulous. All right, to cut out the center of that uh, paper that I've made myself, I went ahead and used a circle die. It was a five inch circle die. I'm gonna save the center of that and use it for something different, but I wanna keep the center of this card nice and open. I have a five and a half by five and a half inch uh, card base that I made myself with white cardstock. Very, very easy to do. You just need to cut a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by 11 inches and then score it right down the middle at five and a half inches, fold it over, and you've got a card base. Now, on that center of the card base, I need to cut out my circle. So I'm laying down my pattern paper that I had my circle cut into and then I'll go ahead and place that circle down and run this through my die cutting machine. This is not going to cut the circle completely. You'll need to go ahead and reposition it and pull up that pattern paper that you've made because that is really thick. But once you get that indentation in there, you can just place it right down. Now I've also done a little bit more die cutting with a circle die, a scallop circle die for, that is smaller than that, and a flag banner die that I'll be using on my card today. Here's the kind of look that the card is gonna go for. You've got a lot of different moving pieces here, but I promise it's super simple and easy to do. On that white cardstock scallop circle, I'm gonna stamp that larger donut and color it in with my alcohol markers. Now you could use any sort of coloring medium that you wanted to here. I just picked the colors that I had to go with the outside of the card that I had already put together that pattern paper for and that just happened to be my alcohol markers. On that flag banner, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that word donut right in the center of there. This is a gorgeous scripty font. I'll stamp it down right in the center and that's gonna be folded up and be a little bit more of a dimensional flag later on. 
Like I said, I'm using my alcohol markers. I use the Dick Blick Studio brush markers. You can use whatever you have on hand. You could even watercolor this, colored pencils, chalks, whatever you want to use for this. But just color it in and make it beautiful. Now I'm making mine look more like a cake donut because if I ever do eat donuts, those are my favorite kind. But I started off with a little bit of brown and tans on the very outside and then on the inside. Who doesn't love pink icing? That was always my favorite as a kid. So that's what I'm using now. I'm very quickly coloring that in and blending it out. I'm using three different colors here just to get a nice uh, variated shade here. And then I'm coming back in. After I let this dry, if I do too many layers, I find that it bleeds really easily on me with these markers. So I like to give it a little bit of dry time in between layers if I can and just work from there. That seems to help me with the bleeding quite a bit and it also helps me blend. I don't know if the color breaks down a little bit or what as you keep going over it, but it just really helps me. Um, I'm coming back in with a little bit of a yellow to go over and really blend out those browns and lighten it up a little bit. But once the coloring was done, it was time to start putting everything together. So I've got that gray piece of cardstock. I've put some adhesive right on the back of it, and this is going to go on the inside of the card. There really is no outside of the card, as you can see. I've cut it all away at this point. So I'm taking off that adhesive backing, and I will place it right in the center of that large circle opening on the front. I've already put down my little donut piece in the center of that, I just used that gray as a mat so the scallop didn't completely blend in with the white cardstock background. I'll press that down very, very firmly and then I also stamped Know How to Thank You in different colors of ink that match the front of that cardstock as well. I don't know if I'd do that again. I might use the same color of ink all the way around, but for this I wanted to try it, switch it up, use all those different colors. I don't hate it, but also if I were to redo this I would probably only use one color. I stamped that down in a circle just by kind of fidgeting with it and moving it around on an acrylic block, kind of shaping it to that circle, and then stamped it down. Now on the outside of my card, it is time to start putting together that shaker card. This is super easy to do, you just need to get your layers right. So I have some, you can use acetate, I actually have clear uh, page protectors here that I've cut down. These are heavy duty. They're not thin. They're very, very thick. I've cut them down to fit over the entire front of the card. I've placed a little bit of adhesive on all the edges of the front of the card base and then I put down that piece of page protector. Now I also am going to put a piece of page protector on the back of the patterned paper that I've made. By doing that, I'm going to seal up everything inside of the shaker. So I've got adhesive all the way around the edges of that patterned paper, and then I put down my page protector right over those pieces of adhesive. It went over the edge a little bit. I just take my long blade scissors and quickly cut that and trim it down. Very simple and easy to do if you make a mistake on this. Now I've got both sides secured, so now I need to make a little well for all my pieces to go into. I'm using dimensional adhesive. I use fun foam and double sided adhesive. That way I can get it to the sides I need it. And I'm placing it along all four sides. If you are doing this with any sort of seed bead or glitter, you need to make sure that this foam is really, really, really butted up against each other. You do not want any openings, even the tiniest of openings. Even though I'm using larger sequins, I've still had that mistake before, so I make sure that all the time my, my fun foam, my dimensional adhesive, whatever I'm using is almost directly connected, or it is directly connected, to those other pieces of adhesive that I already have on there. Nice and secure, no openings, not even the tiniest gap, and you want to make sure that your cuts from your scissors are nice and straight up and down because if you cut at an angle that can give you a gap too that even your seed beads and sequins and that can and stuff can fall out of. Before I take off the backing paper I am going to remember this time to use my embossing bag on both sides of the shaker. 
this just adds a little bit of anti-static so your sequins and that kind of thing move around a little bit more freely. They're not getting hung up on static. Then I remove my adhesive before I put anything in it. I am a little rough when I move my, remove my backing paper so things kind of jump out on me and get stuck to the sides. So I just like to go ahead and remove my backing paper before I put any sort of insert or, or the inside of the shaker in. I'm putting down a sequin mix that matched my card. I filled this up quite a bit because it is such a large shaker and it's just more fun that way I think. So I went ahead and really filled that up. Once I have it exactly as I want it, it's time to put down the pattern paper. Now you want to make sure that you kind of center this and make sure that the corners are lined up. I just kind of um, line it up over the top, kind of hover over the adhesive. Once I get it where I want it, I very quickly press it down and there I've got that shaker all ready to go. It is a little bit tedious looking, but I promise it's super simple and easy to do once you get your layers kind of figured out and what you want the inside of the card to look like as well. I placed that flag banner that said donut on the front, on the bottom. Now this shows through on the inside a little bit. If you didn't want it to, you could always stamp on the outside and heat emboss. Just make sure you use heat safe acetate. And that way you don't have that little bit of, of adhesive showing through on the inside. But there you can see how cool of a look that is. You can see straight through the front to the inside of the card. But you've got those sequins trapped in the middle. It looks like they're going to spill everywhere, but they won't as long as the card doesn't get torn up. Here's a few final looks at the card. I absolutely love the way this turned out. The outside is sparkly. The inside is gorgeous. You can see through it. It's so much fun. Um, it's not something you would want to make a ton of, but for somebody special, this is a super fun card to give to anyone. That does it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to that, you can do that on the left side of the screen. If you did like this video, you can click the like button down below. And also, there are a few different videos if you want to continue watching. Those will be over on the left side of your screen as well. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.